Hello, today I'm pretty excited to share with you a trip down a new road with some software defined radio. Um, I ordered from Amazon a package I received uh, with an SDR, small SDR dongle in it, and uh, let's open it up and see what's inside. So if we open up this uh, envelope, we've got a couple, a couple things inside here. We've got uh, the SDR dongle, which is an interesting packaging. It's just in a in a little baggie, and I ordered a piece of coax, coax converter with a, what is it, let's see, it's a 20 centimeter UH, UHF connector, uh, it's, all, it's all cut off, RG316, it's got the little mini connector on the one end to plug into the dongle, and an SO239 on the other end, so we can attach it to an actual antenna, so nothing exciting there. Let's open up uh, the dongle itself and see what's inside the package. It's a zip top bag. Let's see. There's the dongle. Let's see if you can read it. It is a Nuilec R820T2 SDR and DVB-T. It's the NESDR Mini 2, Nuilec Mini 2. Got it from Amazon for about $25. So it comes with the dongle, it comes with a little remote control, I'm not sure we're going to make much use out of that. It comes with a wire and an antenna. So this little, little uh, whip antenna, telescoping whip antenna, probably not going to make much use out of this either, it seems kind of silly. And then this wire, which um, I believe is for the antenna to attach it. It's a little antenna base with uh, you know a couple feet of wire, and then a connector to attach the antenna to the dongle. So we're pretty much just going to put all this stuff back and not really deal with much of it, other than the dongle itself and the. Uh, the coax adapter that I purchased to go with it so I can attach it to my antenna. So that is the opening and what came in the package. Now let's uh, let's plug this guy in and and uh, you know see what she does and, and check out our first impressions of the new Elec Mini 2 SDR dongle. Okay first impressions. So my first impression of uh, installing the new Elec Mini 2 SDR is that the process to get it up and running and actually use it is not at all intuitive. Um, I've had to read a bunch of instructions and poke around and, and play around with it, try to make it work. And maybe I'm just not very good at these sorts of things, but you know what, I'm, I'm a pretty savvy guy. So I'm guessing that other people are having trouble with this too. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through what I did to get this working and hopefully this will work for you as well. The first thing I did is download um, SDR Sharp. Uh, the current version here is revision 1430. And you just go to airspy.com slash download. And you can also just search for SDR Sharp download on Google and uh, your search engine of choice and you'll come to this page. I'll put a link to it in the description of the video. So you click on the download button here and it just like anything else, it downloads and it shows up in your downloads folder. And we're not gonna go through that because you should know how to download files by now. Um, but anyway, you end up with this uh, zip file that I've put into this folder. So now we need to extract the zip file. Just click on here and say extract. And you get this folder. Now this does not have an install um, or a setup.exe or any kind of install process per se. Really, it's just a run from the folder and, and it works. And you could just run it right now and it would start up and, and you would see SDR Sharp, but it, it wouldn't work at all. Um, you have to plug the, the USB stick into your computer, which I've already done. Um, Windows will install a driver for it, which doesn't work for SDR Sharp. You need to install uh, a different driver and we'll go through that process. Now I've already done it, so I'll just show you how to do it, but uh, I won't actually be able to completely do it myself because I've already done it to make it work. Um, first thing you have to do once you extract these files is you have to run this install-rtlsdr 
uh, batch file. And that's going to download a couple files. It's going to download some support files that SDR Sharp needs. And it's going to download a, a, a program called uh, Zadig or Zadig uh, that you use to install the driver that you need. Now, I don't know where you're, how you're supposed to know to do this. You just have to know, know to do this. So uh, first thing I did is I just double clicked on it and ran this and it, it failed miserably. So uh, I came up with an error message that uh, unzip.exe stopped working and, and I, I don't know. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to run a command prompt here and I'm going to run it as administrator. Say yes, because I think that might be why it failed. And then I'm going to go to this folder. Oops, I'm going to go to this folder here. Nope, I got to go to users, gem, uh, documents, SDR stuff, temp, SDR sharp, and then let's get that file name is install, install rtlsdr.bat, and we're going to run it. And hopefully this works. Um, this is how I was able to get to work before. So it downloads a couple of files, it unzips them, and look at that, it works. I think you have to run it as administrator. I don't know why, but it seems that maybe you must. Um, all right, so like I said, there's a whole lot of files here that it downloads, and it, it well, a couple of files that it downloads, and then it, it unzips them. And I, I don't really know why um, you have to do this process and why it doesn't just come with these files, but it, it doesn't, so... Uh, now, we have to run this uh, Zadig. So we're going to run it here. And it's going to ask if we want to make changes. You need to say yes. And it pops up with this window here. Now, um, for me, um, there's nothing in here. It's supposed to have the the uh, SDR dongle listed here in this drop-down list. And, and, and mine just isn't. So if you get lucky and yours is, uh, just click this install WCID driver and it's going to install this Win USB. Make sure Win USB is selected. It's going to install that driver and replace the existing one and you'll be happy. Now mine mine wasn't there, so I had to go here and say list all devices and now it shows all of my devices. And I found the RTL 2838UHIDIR and clicked on it. Now I had a different driver here and I did click reinstall driver and it replaced the uh, driver that it had downloaded. I forget what it says originally and it replaced it with this driver and everything's worked fine since. So um, if your dongle does not show up here, uh, go ahead and, and do the list all devices, um, go to the drop down, find uh, that bad boy and click reinstall driver or update driver or whatever uh, shows up there, but make sure it's a win USB and then, then you're done here. So now we've downloaded the files, we've extracted the files using the install RTL SDR and we've run Zadig to get the right driver and we're, we're pretty well good to go. We can run SDR Sharp. Now, um, in my case, it uh, Norton doesn't really like this file. So I would say always allow this file and then run this program anyway. And then it will stop, you know, pestering you about that. All right. So now once you're in Air, Air, this is Air Spy, SDR Sharp, it's, it's choosing the Air Spy uh, card. Uh, by default, we've got to choose RTL SDR USB. This is a USB version of the device. And if you click on this little uh, uh, gear here, you should have your one and only uh, choice here is your generic RTL. And that's what we want. A um, couple things here. You got um, some, some settings here. I won't go into what all this does. Here's RF gain if you're trying to pick up a a difficult station or kind of a remote station and you're having a hard time hearing it, you can adjust your RF gain. You can uh, you can turn on automatic gain control, which you lose the option to use the RF gain because it will automatically do your gain control. But for right now, I'm not going to deal with that. Um, if you find your frequency is off by a little bit, uh, which it can in these these little devices, the, the frequency that it displays might not be the exact frequency that's being transmitted or received. And you can come in here and adjust it a little bit and you can actually see it adjusted live. And, and maybe I'll show you how, how to do that. Um, so the first thing that is interesting to do is, uh, uh, punch in your local radio station. Uh, I'm going to punch in 101.1. It's, uh, I live in the Detroit market and this is, this is the riff, uh, to give them a plug, but, uh, it's a, it's a pretty popular radio station in the area. You want wide FM and we'll hit FM stereo and then we're going to hit play. And if we've done everything right, we'll get some music. Um, and you'll see the, the, the radio here and you got the sidebands for the for the digital and the, the high def radio and all that good stuff. You'll actually even see that um, up here we're getting the uh, the radio data 
the uh, the text data that comes along with it. So it's pretty cool that it does that. Um, so let's uh, let's see what else we can find. I believe if we go up to like one uh, sixty somewhere in this neighborhood. Where is it? One sixty nine. No, there's a weather channel. I should have looked this up beforehand. Maybe it's this one. Let's try this. Set to narrow FM. There you go. So this is uh, local weather. We can maybe adjust it up a little bit. There you go. So here's the uh, local uh, FM, or local uh, weather station that we're picking up. And we can zoom in a little bit here and, and see a little bit bigger display of what's going on. Um, now we've... we've you can see that we're, we're not quite maybe on the center here. And this is where we can go into here and say maybe adjust this up a little bit or maybe down a little bit and get it right on. Now, if we know what this frequency is, like if this is 162.5, say, 0, we're way off and we've got to adjust this quite a bit the other direction, right? This is how you do this. Now, I'm not sure what the exact frequency is here, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say back to 0 and, and we'll, we'll deal with that later. But... Um, if you find yourself a well-known uh, station that's a narrow band, you, you can you can kind of see the the center point of that, and you can adjust yourself to to the proper uh, frequency. Then your your receiver will be dead on. So anyway, this is how you uh, set up SDR Sharp to work with the uh, new Elec SDR dongle. And I hope you found this um, video a little bit informative about how to how to do this, because like I said, I struggled with this when I first set it up. Now. My first impressions of, of this, and I'm going to stop this so there's not so much noise. My first impressions once I got this up and running is that this little thing's pretty pretty darn slick. Um, you can pick up the uh, you know the weather channels here. We can pick up FM uh, radio, no problem. I picked up ham bands. There's uh, there's some repeaters in the area, and uh, and you can pick those up. Um, pretty much anything you can a uh, huge array of things you can do with this and this is not a video about what to do with your SDR this is more like about my first impressions now um, I have a decent antenna outside my house although I suspect for local broadcast uh, FM radio stations pretty much anything maybe even the little you know dongle that came with it would be okay the little you know telescopic whip would probably be fine um, but I've got a pretty decent antenna for, uh, uh, it's a ham radio antenna for 2 meters and 75 centimeters. It's a homemade uh, vertical dipole that works very well for picking things like this up. And it, it works in the, you know, 150, 140, 150, 160 uh, megahertz range. It also works in the 400 to 500 megahertz range fairly well. Um, it, it doesn't do very well for things like satellite reception. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to work on some better antennas and, and maybe work through how to set up a uh, satellite reception uh, station in a different video. We'll, we'll work on that another time. But for now, I'm going to leave you here. Um, my, my impression of this is that it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty slick little device. Once you get it up and running, it's very versatile. Um, it's got a very excellent receive. It's got good audio quality. I've been uh, quite happy with it. And uh, you know, for 25 bucks, this is this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna have quite a bit of enjoyment um, in using it, and and I'm definitely looking forward to doing more with it. Uh, go out and, and do some searching and find out what else you can do with it. But uh, anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video um, at least a little bit informative. And if you have any uh, comments about what I, I could do differently or, or what other people could maybe do differently to make this process a little bit easier, please feel free to comment in the comment section and let me know. And if there are some significant changes that need to be made to the, the installation process here, I will certainly be happy to update the video and and uh, uh, just to help people out and, and try to get it installed. So uh, thank you for watching and I will see you later.